Hi everyone, so Silver Seventeen here. Let me refer this like usual. I know, you know, I did not um, these pictures because I mean, I just made the thumbnail, non paid video. All right, okay. So let me get through this real quick. Um, and this this is kind of a what if I did that was one of those things. I'm still trying to figure out the Gilgamesh Deku, and there was a Dante and Virgil thing I'm gonna make, but um, this is gonna be something else later on. But here's a here's a quick rundown. Of this what if. This is gonna be taking place during the after the war arc and like the when he becomes a vigilante. Basically, <clears throat> it's one Deku is facing off against well after facing off against Lady Hold on. I... Alright, so basically after facing Lady Nagant. And well he learned about the corruption in the hero world. So and we all know Deku is going to be willing to kill now in this one, you know, at this point in time. But there's a little, there's a little thing. He still is unsure if he's going to be able to. So, <clears throat> as, well, my creative mind thought, and I went over, I talked to a friend about it. So, he basically... Was said this would be an interesting idea, so why not? By the way, if you guys know what this basically the night raid symbol is, then you know the anime. If you know the anime, you know this is sad. And basically, <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. All right, okay. So I may have to pause the video, take you know, have a drink, basically, um, drink some iced tea every once in a while, so I will pause the video. Or get something to eat. I don't know yet. But anyways. Let's just start with this video. So as we all know. I already told you what's happened so far. And we're just taking place. And well. How can I say this? Alright. So. Basically. In another. Well. Dimension. All together. Three. Beasts are talking. Basically, as one of them says, well, technically these are, these are not their brothers because of they are basically of the same type of monsters race, basically. Shadow monster, I mean, shadow beast, basically. But, well, race, beast, whatever, but they're in different forms, you know. Well, different forms I mean by this they have different looks they're not the same type there's different versions of them there can be dragon leviathan cerberus and they all have all well, of legends say so yeah and you guys are wondering why them and not something else one I really came with the interest in ideas of them and two I mean why not I mean, I legit like these these you know legendary creatures, and I, I just thought it'd be better off. I mean, you're you're dealing with this. World, you know what? Frick, I'm just gonna say this: the world is a comic got kill. If you don't know about it, there's a lot of people dying in this anime, and it's not for the faint of heart who has a favorite character. Don't get attached to them. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyways, so well, in the in this Pacific. Beast, one of them says, There's a great evil here, a demon amongst the humans. As another one says, That sounds like a serpent, basically. Yes, I agree. We need someone to help us out in taking care of this problem. As the one that's in the middle of, well, in the middle of them, he's like, <laughs> well, Who would it be? Can't be a human here. Some of them are just way too corrupted. And not, not any of them can control three of us. As the one that said about the corruption, it's the eldest one, said, that's the point. That's why I call this a meeting. We may not be here physically, but through our power we're able to manifest ourselves anywhere in the world. So... We have to call someone, summon someone, 
from another reality and dimension. Which the serpent one says, What do you mean? How is that even possible? So basically, no one in the middle agrees. And he goes, Well, with our powers combined, that is, we will be able to. We have enough power. <sighs> even if we were slain and turned into imperial arms, our power is still vast and great to the point no human could ever handle it. Not even our previous users could. They could access at least one third of our power. That is a good point. So, brother, what are we gonna do? What champion of ours do you have in mind? As he as basically the one who suggests this, aka, says, "Well, I've been keeping an eye on this boy, and let me show you his past." So he shows Deku's past and what's going on currently. As the one in the middle that has basically, you know, three heads. You get it. Says, he seems like an excellent candidate, but do you think he's still weak, even though he has this amazing power called the Quirk? And its name is One for All. As I can, well, tell from this brother, it's not just one Quirk. As, basically... The one that is, well, you know, suggested this, nods. And basically, he says, Hey, Loom, I know what you're thinking, but do not worry. I already made, <laughs> I already made sure if he could handle it. I thought about it, and <laughs> I had some time to think. He's our only chance. There's too much corruption, too much evil. A balance needs to be made. As basically the serpent says, he is right, Helium. I, I know this may sound unpleasant, but we'll have to change something about him. He's too green. We can't just have him save people without some sacrifices being made. As basically Helium nods, which is the three headed and obese, as he was. Luma. Wait, not Luma. I had the name. I've confused it, sorry. Lulum. Yeah. Lulum. Are you sure about this? The only one who can change him is me, since why we summon him is going to be in my cave. Which he nods. Basically, the serpent named Lulum. As we see, they look. As basically, Lulum looks at. Well. The old, basically. His brother, aka the beast with wings and horns, with a long, with some of a long neck and a tail. That looks like a lizard, aka a dragon. Basically, he goes, Diablo, are you sure that well, the process will be done quick? We don't have much time. They're about to find me pretty soon. I give it a month. As he, Diablo nods, he goes, Yes, but uh, his personality will be need to change. He'll have to be way more attuned to killing, and the sacrifices that will be made aren't that great. The evil will be, well, cured, and he seems like he needs to kill the, you know, kill anyways. And he's unsure about himself if he's able to do it. At least this will help him out. Alright. Let's get this started then. As all like the other two knob, which was Halo basically not, you know, says it. So as all of a sudden a magical circles appear in. If you guys are gonna say, oh, this doesn't have magic, it has science. Um Uh Well, I did see magic basically you know, wand and stuff, so, I just say, I'm basically, I'm thinking magic existed in the world of Akami got kill, but it was replaced by science. So, yeah, but I'm just saying in this one, magic is this and science is this. I mean, it does make sense, but anyways. 
So, as this circle is appearing, and they're basically concentrating their power all into one point, Izuku is currently running. From what? Nothing. Just trying to find a place to hide and take a little nap, at least for three hours. And he, basically, when he finds a place in a building, he's just like, Oh, great, finally. A place to sleep. I'm really, I'm tired. As when he takes a step into the building, he notices a magical well, circle coming around him. He goes, what the, is this someone? As then a beam of light, you know, covers him and poof, he's gone. And so, uh, so we're going back to the Kamika Kill world. And well, the magical beam, well, the beam appears in their world as an Azuku's there. He goes, what the, where am I? What's happening? All for one. Is this your doing? As, well, Diablo says this. <laughs> no, it is not. It is ours. As Izuku looks and he sees this glowing eyes of basically red. Well, technically blue. Well, technically red, blue, and black. Basically, black is the one he's staring at. He goes, you are in a different reality and dimension, boy. And do not worry about your world. You'll be, you'll be brought back in a matter of seconds there. Maybe even minutes. Because our time here is way more different than yours. Which, Azuku says, like, what the? What, what? As he basically is looking around, he sees all three of them. He's like, what are you? Uh, beast. You know, the, well, what Diablo says. He goes, beast? Yes. Anyways. Allow me to explain the situation this world is in. So he explains about the world. How humans in this world have become so corrupted that many people have been dying because of poly like the ones who are wealthy and power and are rich and corruption. As he's thinking, just like my world, but worse. I, I think... And then, basically, Hilum, they say the three-headed animal, well, Beast says, And that's why we summoned you. I know this may be unsettling, but please, we need your help. As, you know, Hilum nods. He goes, We beg of you, help us. We are just mere imperial arms. We can't do nothing. The only reason why we can't to manifest ourselves here is because uh, we have enough power to do that and run. We can't do nothing else without a wielder. Hold on. So, as Azuku looking at Lilum, he goes, uh, Really? Which Diablo says, Yes, it's unfortunate. But uh, that's the state we are in. We are legendary and pure arms. But we can't do nothing without someone to wield us. And that's why I searched for someone for so long. Many centuries have passed. But only you seem fitting, Izuku Midoriya. He goes, but why me? Why? You already hold a great amount of, well... How should I say this without well, be offensive? Pressure on your shoulders. The weight of the world. And you already seem tired. You're being hunted down for your power. Your court, one for all. But she goes, how do you... And he goes, I've said I've been watching you. From my world, of course. And I appear... It's every once in a while I watch you. And I heard about the explanation. So, <laughs> may I ask you, will you please help us out? Which, Taku does look at, you know, look at them and then think, if I'm in a different dimension and they say time is faster here and slower in my world, I need to make sure. He goes, alright, I'll help, but I need to understand some things about this world. Well, dimension, actually. He goes, anything. 
Are you serious about saying my dimension is slower? He goes, yes. Every well second here. Well, actually, no. I am quite old, so give me a minute. I think basically he thinks about it. He was like, oh, yes. Every second in your world is a day here. Which his eyes widen. He was like, wait, so we mean one second here is one day? So what would happen if I'm gone like for five minutes? That's five years, I believe. As I loom goes like, no, it's five months. Hmm. Ah, yes, thank you, Loom. Five months, to be precise. But are you 100% sure, Loom? He goes, no, it's complicated. He's like, yes. But just know, you will not be gone for a day. He's like, all right. Um, is there any technology and quirks? Uh, yeah, no. Hey, Loom? No, all medieval. So, your fancy tech, you know, your nut technology along with, well, your quirk will have to be hidden. Luckily for you, we uh, have some certain magical abilities of our own. And I'm allowed to do <laughs> shape shift because of how I was made. <sighs> the person who created my imperial arm wanted me to combine shape shifting and, well, changing someone's appearance or clothing sometimes. But, that will be explained later. But for now, understand this. What will happen to you is going to be very, very painful. This is not a matter of you using us. When you say, using, and what is Imperial Arm? That is basically, you know, he looms, answer his question. He's like, a Imperial Arm is something you wear or have a comp or have something by your side, or as a weapon. Basically, anything I just said that before a weapon is a weapon. That's what they are. A imperial arm is a weapon of mass destruction of chaos. It does not matter if it's so simple. Which, there are two nod. Which is was like, whoa, that's a lot. And basically, they, the other says, I know. And we apologize if this is too much for you. Which he does take a deep breath in. And then take a deep breath out. So. What I'm getting at is. You three are Imperial Arms. How are you guys made? He goes. We were beasts. Triple S rank beasts to be precise. That were slain and made into these weapons. It's a pain but. It happens. For us, at least. Then, you know, England goes, like, Yes, it is a pain. But you're hunted down and slain. And turned into weapons. I mean, I have met some quite interesting wielders at the time when I was being used. But right now, since I went away and disappeared into the, the shadows, I... <laughs> Haven't been used in a while. And Diablo agrees with that. And he But anyways. So. They tell the Suzuku. We are legendary Imperial Arms. Three legendary Shadow Beasts. Our kin were only S rank. Shadow Beasts. Some were triple S rank. But us. We were monstrous on our own. Enough to take down a kingdom or a continent, depending if we work together. Which is Uku shocked by that. Anyway, so, is your power limited to the user? Yes. Hold on, guys. So, basically, Izuku was like, I see. But, okay, it will be my first Imperial arm then, which Halum steps forward. He goes, and then basically, Izuku looks at him and goes like, 
I am Helium, the creature called Cerberus, and <laughs> I'll be the one who will, well, guide you to the others. We are scattered across the land, but <laughs> we can take physical form and at least run around. It is very complicated, but even in our state as weapons, we still possess some um, capabilities of our own. Which Izuku was impressed by this. Really. So. He was like, what's going to happen? How are we going to help do this thing? <laughs> I don't know how to. He was, you are tired. I know. But this will hurt quite a bit. Which he goes, uh-huh. Basically... Diablo says, we are shadow beasts. Our users will wear us as basically a weapon. Helium is gauntlets. So, normally a person will put gauntlets onto their, you know, basically fists. Well, over their fists and around their arm, but in this circumstance, wait, yeah, cir yeah circumstance. Cir I have seen someone who has... Merge and peel our arm with themselves and became even stronger. So, <laughs> we are going to do that. But you have to get strong to handle us. We've emerged with your body, Azuku. That means if you die, we die. Which Azuku's eyes shot. He was like, But are you sure you're gonna have to have that much faith in you? As Illum says, of course we would. We already saw what you've been through. And then Helium says, You are Deku. The one who can deny the impossible. Am I correct? Which he goes, which, I mean, which he smiles and goes like, Yeah, I'm gonna be the number one hero. And which, a little bit of, of the old Izuku came back and they all chuckle. And, well, Helium says, Brothers, we will meet again someday. And I... I uh, hope it will be on a good day. Which they all nod. As they end, basically they fade away. As Helium is still there, you know, sitting, basically, tall. He's like, now, Izuku, what's gonna happen is, I am in, well, actually, how should I explain this more simply? What you saw, or see in front of you, is a physical manifestation of our power. Energy. Magic, you can call Different from your world with technology. Magic and technology do exist, but it's not that advanced as yours. So be warned. He's like, right. But my knowledge will give you a certain edge in learning what you need to know about this world. I have not been out since hmm, 45 years. No, 30 years, I think. So the world may have changed since then. Please understand. He goes, right. How is, are you going to merge with me? It's like, my energy will start, well, my power or magic will start covering you. Basically, what you'll see then is the gauntlets. The gauntlets will start to, well, liquefy and seep into your body, basically. Covering you. It'll be sudden. But when it does, when your body does absorb, well, that's liquid, your body will start to feel immense pain. I will have to change your bone structure to become, and the bones to become stronger, fixing whatever problems that they have. Even the tendons will be repaired. Your well, physical and mental will be different. You will not be the same Zuku and Doria as you came here. Be a lot more colder at times. This is for your own good. In this world, you'll find out what it means. Kill or be killed. Human and monster flesh. And this will ease your pain of killing someone. His Zuku eyes widen. He goes like, But I'm... You're not sure that's what I mean by your mental... Well, person, well, your mental state will change. Occluding your personality. You'll be cold sometimes. 
You will not feel any emotion when killing someone. Or at least the look. You may feel something at times, but that'll be it. And I'm sorry. But she does, you know, look down. It's like, why? We took you from your world. and We put you in this state. Uh, and even will change you. But please understand. This war is in great danger. And you will be a hero. Not to many. Maybe not to at all. You'll be known as a monster for killing so many people. Maybe. I do not know the future. He goes, and Azuki just looks at him. He was like, all right, Helum, it's fine. I understand. This does kind of take some weight off my shoulders. <laughs> I mean, killing is not going to be easy, but if you're sure this is the only way, that's fine. I'll save this world at least. At least there's no one that is after me at all. Well, maybe. Who knows yet. So. <laughs> I'm ready. As he, as Helen looks at him, basically not. As all of a sudden, his, Helen's magical power from at the gauntlets start to cover Zuku. As then he basically sees the gauntlets. They are, basically, they look like they have three heads on each side. And they look like they have claws to them. Basically. As then all of a sudden they start, they both start to liquefy because, you know, gauntlet, so it's like, you know, one set and another set. So, well, like one and then one. So it's basically like a set. Mm, sorry. Anyway, so basically they start to, look like they start to melt. Azuku was like, all right, here we go. As then it just basically latches onto Azuku like it's freaking venom, like latching onto him. Eddie Brock, and you can say like the Omnitrix latching onto Ben's arm, but what it does, you know, when basically it's like venom is seeping into his skin, and f bones and flesh, whatever, he starts to feel the change in his body, muscle structure just changing, in which, basically, imagine how can I say this? Imagine a character from. Hajime? Yeah, imagine Hajime when basically after he made the monster, f you know, monster flesh, I mean, basically meat, and he started changing. Yeah, imagine that's how it's happening. So basically, Zuku screaming out in pain as basically his muscle and, well, his bone, his muscle, basically, and he they start to change and he gets a little bit taller. Basically, he'll be taller than Bakugo is going to be short and him. By a few, like, four inches. Deku would be four inches taller than Bakugo. Probably even, no, not four, six inches taller than Bakugo, which, <laughs> yeah. So, he screams out of pain, his hair color staying the same, his eye color is going to be staying the same. But, you know, he's just, you know, then passes out from the pain. In which, after that is done, he... Well, slept for about two hours, and then he wakes up. He like, ah, oh, my head. What the hell? I'm in. Oh yeah, a cave. And what? My voice. It sounds a little bit different. That's weird. But oh well. So he gets up and he notices his. Clothing's different. And, well, basically, the reason why is, well, like I said, Cerberus can shape shift. Um, yes, he is gauntlets, but like I said, the person who was making his Imperial arm wanted him to shape shift because he had an idea for the fangs. So he kind of made it the blade, but both gauntlets changed into swords. Reason why? The fangs. Why can't you sing my fangs with? Daggers are swords, so why not? If you guys have a problem with that, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Just enjoy the what if. Or at least try to. Anyway, so as Deku basically notices his costume, so well his costume, well his hero costume is gone, and 
His clothing is way more, well, fancy. He has black pants and black shoes. He has basically a white shirt and a vest on. Basically, his white shirt is long, and it looks like he has oh, not gloves on at all. But you can see his, he still has his scars, which he's like, huh, I wonder if this is because of Helium. Eh, I like to call him Cerberus better. Hope he doesn't mind that. I wonder if we can even talk to each other. Uh, I'll have to find out later. So, as Azuku exits out the cave, he, you know, and he notices, though, after it's, you know, covering his eyes and, you know, it adjusts to the light, he sees a little, well, a city that's not near the capital, basically. And he's like, huh. That looks like a good city or town. I don't know. Hmm. I hope I can find someone for directions. Alright. Here we go. And basically, if you guys are wondering, he's on the cliffside. So basically, he just starts sliding down it. And meanwhile, in his mindscape, Heloom has entered it. In which, you know, he's just sitting down. As then he says, You. Seven. Come on out. I can sense you're there. As then, all the past users come out. I'm not going to say all of them, but just know they're all there. As Nana Shimura is the first one to ask, Why? Why? Or what? Well, first off, What is... What are you first? I know we were listening to his conversation with you, but I don't believe you. He's like, that is fine, human. <laughs> Not many people would believe it. A world where, well, quirks do not exist. It's a shocking thing. Magic is this instead. Technology is, <laughs> is advanced in its own way, but not by your standards. Which the first user comes forward and he's like, And you brought him here just to help you out? He's a hero. He goes, Yes, and you will see this world. You will understand why. Please. Do not hate him for our actions. Do not think he is not worthy. What you will see in this world will even change your mind. I... I know. It may sound cruel to put so much weight on a boy. A child. But he'll find allies. He'll find them. And basically, the four fuses goes like, how do you know? He goes, I have a feeling he'll find some very close friends in this world. I'll be saddened to see him gone. But, let's get to know one another. So basically, one of them asks, basically the third user asks, what did you do to him, you know, specifically? He goes, hmm, I mend any damage that was already done to himself before coming here. So his limbs and his one of his arms are back to normal and stronger than ever. His bone structure is way more durable. His skin is ten times tougher than normal well, steel. Basically, in your world, <laughs> a bullet would just fall off of him. In our world... The most dangerous sword could not even pierce him. Which everyone is shocked. So, okay, by our world standards, he was like, hmm, from his memories. As basically, he just looks like he was like, a rocket launcher would just, well, leave a scratch. Which everyone is shocked by that. And then he goes, and that's because. <laughs> well. My Imperial Arms gives someone a little bit of an extra boost to their defense. Like, which the first year goes like, how so? <laughs> I actually become an armor for my, well, my, one of my um, trump cards for Imperial Arms. Which they're like, shocked. But there's another trump card that I have that's even way more powerful. 
I was like, what's that? The gates of hell. Where's there are shot and he says, I can summon, a, well, whoever used me actually can summon out the gates of hell. And my true form is, comes out and I draw them into it. Basically, it'll be a mental illusion to them, but in actuality, they did enter it. Which, they are kind of shot. It was like, okay, compared to one for all, how much control would he have of you right away? <laughs> Only 2%. He'll have to train like he does with one for all, but unlike his quirk, <laughs> our training is way more of a bond. The more time he spends with us, the stronger we'll become with him. And since we always will be with him, <laughs> our 100% is a league above one for all, and all of your courts combined. But, since we are part of, well, him, and you are part of him, that means, well, my 100% along with, well, one for all, <laughs> it will be over 200, I mean, it will be 200%. It's, they all are shot, but we have to find the other two as quickly as possible. For this evil may not stay, well, hidden for long. Uh, and there are some other abilities I have. I can see some people's true intentions or true selves. Even their thoughts can be seen and they're a past sin. Like, wait, what? He's like, I summon a gate of hell. What do you expect? He's like, true. I mean, that was like the second user. And, well, basically, he also, is also his physical strength, since he's been training to handle this, is way more enhanced. Like, uh, how much enhanced the, <laughs> uh, well, the seventh user says, I'm not seventh, I mean, fifth user, I mean, sixth user says, he's, well, yeah, he says like this, how much enhanced, he's like, in human speed, he's currently the strongest human on this planet, I believe. Which, they're all shot. So back to when Izuku gets into town. So, because Izuku just around well, city, town, so because of him just getting there, he basically is just looking around. He's like, man, the people here aren't even happy. Ah, seems like a shithole. Wait, am I cursing? And then he thinks to himself, nah, I couldn't be cursing, right? I never curse. Hmm. Eh. It doesn't matter. I mean, I had to change my personality to match this world. I have to kill, probably. Ah, uh, man. This is a pain in the neck. And I'm tired. I need to sleep. Ooh, sometimes I wish I had as I was sleeping bag. That basically stops in place for a few minutes, and he's like, and basically, it basically like processing, processing, and goes like, "That's why he always has a sleeping bag." I respect for Aizawa Sensei. They really do now. <sighs> Being working all night sucks. So as he was walking along, he basically has his head up, and he sees this well. This blue hair woman in a hat, basically, outfit that's big on, I mean, that's small on her, looks like, well, the top part small and has some marking on her chest, and I think a choker, I believe, hold on, I want to double check. Yeah, um, yeah, she does, but it's a, basically, her hair, her blue hair is long, and she's wearing high heels, boots. So he's just passing by her like he does not care. 
which she does not notice him either. But then all of a sudden, Danger Sense goes on, in which she thinks, <laughs> So, people are trying to kill me. I wonder how I should. As then, in a blink of an eye, all of a sudden, all of them are just on the floor, knocked out. Which, she just is shocked. As then, Izuku just starts stretching. He's like, man, just walking around here and they already want to attack you. What the fuck is going on? In which Ezdef looks, you know, behind her and she sees this green haired boy. By the way, you know, he has all the scars so basically on his face, too. So when everyone does, boy is not looking at him very much because of it, but Ezdef, you know, when she looks at him, she goes, You! There! He goes, Huh? He looks back and he sees her. He was like, Um, yeah, what's up? He's like, Did you do this? He goes, He basically, Shrugs, he was like, maybe, maybe not. Am I in trouble? She was like, no, I just need to know. It's like, it, well, it seems like they're attacking someone. I don't know if it was between me or you, but hey, I'd rather take them down. So, yeah, I guess if it was for you, then you're welcome. She goes like, I, I could have handled it myself. Do you know who I am? He goes, no. And quite frankly, I don't care. Which I, even shocks him a little. And so she was like, ah, ah, How rude of you! He was like, hm, What are you going to do about it? She was like, Oh, challenging me, huh? He was like, No, just trying to waste some time. Like, just trying to waste some time. Where she was like, ah. I'm sorry about that. But, you know, stomach, I'm hungry, but yeah. Anyways, so she was like, ah, how dare you? I am a general. I am. As then all of a sudden, a grunt comes and goes like, General, we should get going. Like, general Ezda. And she was like, listen here, you. I'm about to teach this little. As then she looks and he's gone. But there's just like a little dust cloud where, his, where he was. And she's like, who is he? And uh, I'm impressed by him. Wanted to get his name at least. I may have spared his life. He gave me a good fight. But. Uh, come on. Let's get going. And you know she looks mad. And he's like yes ma'am. So yeah. Mizuku is just running. Like he's basically just running. As fast as he can. He's using black whip. Full cowling. Fajin. And, well, <laughs> basically, he's surprised on how fast he's moving. And he was like, huh, I don't know where I'm going, but I have a feeling that, well, next town or city over is this way. So, basically, when he gets... Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to grab something to eat, so hold on, everyone. Alright, guys, I just ate something, so... <sighs> Let's just get back into this. Okay, so basically, after about, well, uh, I would say about maybe 30 minutes, Izuku arrives uh, back on the cliffs, well, actually in the forest, as he basically is tired. He, he you know, took at least an hour nap, but he is tired after using Fajin, Black Whip, Full Cowling. And I forgot to mention Fult. Alright, by the way, I forget, I just want to tell you guys now, now, Tatsumi is not going to be part of Night, I mean, well, Night Raid, if you guys know the anime. So, yeah. Reasons why is, I thought it would be too, um, focusing on both characters, but it's also, like, it'll be just all done a whole lot more differently with Azuko around. So, yeah. But anyways. I know you guys are probably saying, Oh no, please, you know, add him in. Don't, like, take him out. But, yeah, he's not going to be part of Night Raid. He's not going to die. <laughs> he's just not going to join. You'll see why. Anyways. So, 
because Azuka was tired, he basically says, uh, it's, I don't know what time it is, but I need to take a nap. Uh, so he just falls asleep. <laughs> so about, well, midnight, he sleeps for that long because he doesn't have the weight of the world on his shoulders. Like he did in his old world. So, he basically is, you know, wakes up, he stretches. He's like, man, I really needed that sleep. As then all of a sudden he hears, well, hello. He was like, Zuko, you're awake. He's like, uh, Surfers. He goes, hmm, it seems your voice changed, your attitude changed too. He's like, yeah, yeah. So, how have you been? He goes, I've been fine. I've been talking to the past users and, well, worked on some stuff while you, well, while you were basically walking and then running and not sleeping. He's like, okay. Well, I'm impressed by your <laughs> strength and speed already. <sighs> I, there's a few things I should, there's a few things I should tell you. He's like, all right, what is it? Well, you're stronger than most humans, not because of your quirk. I mean, physical-wise. You're in human strength and speed and reflexes. Okay. Your clothing, you see, has changed because of what I've done. You'll be able to transform back into your hero costume, but it may look a little more different and repaired. It's like, how so? Well, the fabric will still be the same, but <laughs> I look a lot more menacing. Which Deku was like, all right. Anything else I need to know? Yes. Anything from your world that inquires a bullet, dagger, guns, or whatever. Even a rocket launcher could not hurt you by this world's standards. You can survive most, well, attacks. Even blasts and be probably even frozen. And still become unscathed by it. Which Azuku's like, alright. Why is that? He's like, one, because your skin's ten times durable than most. Which, then he also adds, and plus, my... Well, one of my trump cards from my sacred gear that you'll have. And so he just tells him about the armor, about how what he can see and stuff. And, you know, like, you know, see what people's true, you know, intentions are, sin, and what they're really like. You know, all that. It's like, alright. So, I'm going to try to get to the city, see if the ring one's up, and, well... Actually, as he looks, and then he basically sees a mansion in the distance. He's like, actually, that mansion could have some people I can ask for help. Probably get some food. Which, server goes, hmm, that's a good idea. So, Azuku just jumps off of the, well, the cliffside into the trees. It does, I mean, he just started running normally. No quirk activated, just, well, for him, it's... Just a light jog. Nah, nah. It's just an actual run. He's just taking it slower. Because he needs to try to figure out how can he explain himself. So, when he gets there. Let's just say this. Basically, he arrives at the mansion. And he already... And basically, if you guys know what this mansion is. Yeah, it's with the freaking people that... Basically... Kale talks you know, to talk, like, me's friends. Basically, the mother with poisons and, well, the daughter with beating his female friend to death. So, yeah. Hold on real quick. Alright, so basically, yeah. Yeah. So, when, like I said, when he arrives there, he basically sees these guards are just dead. He's like, what the... What's happening here? What's going on? As Cerberus just says, Thoughts of me. 
I mean, not Tatsumi. Um, Zuku, I sense a great presence here. One of suffering and pain. But she goes, what the? What do you mean? He's like, I do not know, but it's coming from... Well, basically, he's in the front, and the shed's in the, well, the places in the back, I'm saying. So basically, he says, go, basically, left, to make your right. Basically, it'll be in a shed. It's like, how do you know it's a shed? He's like, I just do. It's like, all right, all right, all right, trust you, Severus. So basically, Izuku, you know, goes to his left. Then when he makes a right, he just sees, well, Akami and Leona. Basically, Akami's about to strike the kid down, face the, the girl. As then he goes like, shit, they're about to kill her. As then all of a sudden, he goes like, just use your, well, use your quirk to get there as fast as you can. He's like, right. What, then what's going to happen? Well, your hero Carson will appear. He's like, good. As when he basically does use the quirk full cowling, at least 30%. He basically did, like blitzes over really quickly, and well, his actual hero costume is well there. But the thing is, how can I say this? It still looks like it's you know torn up, but but it's way more. Hmm. There's some extra things to it, like the mask is a little bit more jagged, like you know. Looks like it's broken and shaped differently, like actual fangs. The hat is, you know, basically his hood that he has on is so much more different. And, well, how can I say this? His pants, his sneakers, his sneakers look like boots now. And his pants have way more arm, like, look like they have padding and armor on it. His actual front of his and back part of his actual costume actually has more padding and you know to defend him so when he gets there you know basically there's like a dust in the kami you know thinks she knows her blade stopped as well he basically just blocking a kami sword with his bare arm well maybe by bare arm i mean like his arms covered in something like a red um, coil that I keep on seeing in a picture when I look online of a Zuku vigilante costume. Basically, I just saw like coil red on his arm. So he basically just hits that. And he's like, Oi, what the hell do you think you're doing to this kid? As basically, Khan kind of goes, like, Who are you? He was like, that's none of your damn business. As he just basically hits her center flying a little, well, sent her off her feet and flying a little bit. She does a back flip and slides. Which the only was like, oh, strong, aren't you? He's like, stronger than you. Bring it on. And so she was like, all right, then take this. I was basically, well, they start fighting. And Izuku's basically dodging her attacks really easily. Throws a kick. She basically dodges it, but then, well, he basically disappears from her sight, and, well, he throws a punch, but since they're flying again, as in, well, since Leona flying, as in Danger sets Kingston, and he dodges a Kami strike, and then sweeps her, and then, well, knees, well, well, actually grabs her, and throws her into the, well, shed, basically. As he, when he basically sees that, he immediately sees... Tatsumi's friend dead on the floor and then Tatsumi's hanging on well Tatsumi's fine Tatsumi was just knocked out he hasn't woken up yet he's just chained up hanging like his friend was as he goes like what the as then he basically server says Zuku use my eyes and then well what Zuku sees is what has happened to these people what has ever happened there then he, he looks at the girl who goes like, and he just says in the most coldest, deadest tone ever, he goes, what the hell is, has happened here? Which even she's terrified as Akami, you know, hearing that too, it's like, what the, why was he defending her and now he 
was he not a part of here? There was no information, but... And then basically she looks at Tatsumi, and he's perfectly fine. He's not, you know, dead at all. But he's just waking up. He's like, uh, what's... What's going on? And then basically, he, he sees his dead friend on the ground, because he can see, you know, her face and her hair color. He basically starts saying her name. He's like, basically, wake up! Come on! Wake up! And then he basically says, come He's like, hey, help my friend! She's... And then... She's hurt really bad, and he goes, and then Kami goes like, she's dead, I'm sorry. Well, she was like, no, no, and then, well, basically while this is going on, he's saying that he hears his other friend who's in the cage and such, blah, 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 and Kami, you know, helps him down, but he knows Suzuku's going towards the girl, as in Tatsumi hears his friend, be you know, before he starts coughing out blood and stuff, I mean, well, actually not blood yet, that what they did, and he's piss he doesn't have a sword on him nothing but when Azuku gets to the girl she's scared as if he just grabs her by her shirt he's like tell me what the hell you did to these people as she goes she goes I did I did not as then he just punches the wall which well the door which is metal as it breaks and make with the dent his arm going all the way through he's just dead you know, just staring her in the eyes while he did that. He goes, tell me now. As then she basically, you know, gets his hand off of him. I mean, off of her. And then she goes on, like, well, I'm not going to say exactly what she says in the anime. But basically she says, I'm going to try and make it similar to it, but not 100%. She was like, it doesn't matter what I did to them. They were just commoners, filthy ants that I could play with. This is like my toys. And so what if I kill that girl? She was a lot prettier than me with her hair. I basically tr gave her extra trim because of it. How dare she be prettier than me? So I just taught her a lesson. There's nothing more what these well, miserable ants can do. There's my playthings I can toy with as much as I want. As, well... As basically Leon basically gets there and she was like... Jeez, I didn't suspect you to be this sick. As I call me, you know, again, up, she goes, hm, I'll end this with one strike. As an Izuku, without even hesitation, just legit swipe his hand, decapitating her. It was that quick. Which they are shocked, even taught to me. And then all of a sudden, he just looks at her, and Sarah just says, Burn her. In which, well, like I did say, he gained... Well, basically, before he does, he was like, How do I do that? He goes, Well, just think of fire. I gained some of... I learned some things from Diablo before we were turned into Imperial Arms. He just got it. So, all of a sudden, fire appears on his hand. And then he basically just places over the girl's body and it just starts burning. And then he goes, also, thanks for the information. I forgot when I was on the way running here. All over to the capital. That, hmm, I have your information, all your all knowledge. He goes, it's not a problem, Izuku. He goes, and you were right. There are monsters in human clothing and human skin. This world is so corrupted. It sickens me. Which, basically, he looks back and he sees Tatsumi holding his friend and such. And he does feel sorry for him. As then he asks, why? Why? As, basically, Leona, I mean, yeah, Leona says, the capital is corrupted. This is just one part of it that is. And I'm sorry for your friends. Which, he just starts, you know, crying and such. And Kami says, basically, since he never killed, they don't see no potential in him. They say, she says, go home. There's nothing you can do here. There's nothing. So, thoughts of me is shot. And he looks to see Zuko just walking away. He basically, you know, goes over to him. Well, running past Akami and over to Zuku, as you know, he basically gets in front of him and he grabs him. He was like, Why did you kill her? It was supposed to be my job to kill her. 
As Azuka's just staring at him, he goes, Why is that? He was like, It's because she killed my friends. My friend. Even her mother. Basically, he doesn't. Maybe. I he goes, Then they say tell about the mother poisoned, you know, with medicine, their victims and such. As they say, it's actually the same virus that killed his friend. As then he just looks at him and shoves off his hand. He goes, What? You were tied up and you were just getting out, and so I killed her. It's not like you. It's not like. Uh, you were going to, anyways. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, like I said, you were tied up. You may have killed her out of fury, but on the inside, you may not have wanted to kill her. So. Don't ever come at me angry. Got it? Which taught, and basically Izuku just, like, he can tell Izuku's being dead serious, and when he looks at Izuku's eyes, it's taught to me, he can tell if he messes with him anymore, he may end up dead. And so he backs away, was like, what, what are you? He goes, hm, I don't know. I don't feel anything when I killed her, so, maybe something different than human. And besides... Go home. Go help out your family or whatever. Or your reason why you're here. I don't care. Just go. And be safe. As Rick was walking past him, he's like, I, I did forget you, he still has the, you know, Grand Torino's cape and everything. So yeah. As. Well, he's. As basically, Tatsumi just falls to his knees. And Akami and Leona go over to where Zuku's going. And well basically Leona like goes over and is like, hey, wait up. He's like he looks back, he goes, huh? He goes, Listen, I don't know who you are, but has not pretty impressive just use your bare hands to kill someone? How about you come with us? He goes, why should I? He goes and basically comes goes like, because if you don't, I'll have to kill you. He was like, hmm. Nice try. Threats don't work on me. And we see Leona goes like, don't mind her. She's, well, you're not part of the mission, but you got in her way, so. <laughs> goes, and then I apologize. I didn't know she was just scum. So, who are you guys anyways? As basically the rest of the team comes down as one that goes like, hey, what's taking you guys so long? Did you... Wait, who is he? As basically Leona says, maybe a new member to the goop, I mean to Night Raid. And as he goes, Night Raid? What's that? And she goes, uh, you don't know? And he's like, nope, new around these parts. He's like, well, we're a group of assassins. And, well, we're here to take down the, you know, the corruption of the capital, basically. And he's like, and basically Server says, just exactly what you're here to do. Because the greatest evil we sense is in the capital. A whole bunch of it. So, alright, I joined. As Cerberus is surprised, he just joined, well, joined right away, or he at least said. Which they're like, uh, you're not, don't need a second thought. So, lead away to your base. Let's get going. In which, they're just not. Everyone. As they basically you know, disappear in their shadows with Izuku following them. And, well, it takes a couple of hours to get there, and he takes a nap, and then it's just the next morning, and, well, he does look around it, around the place. It was pretty cool. But, it's a hidden place. And in the side of a mountain. Hmm. wonder how outside looks. So, basically, he goes outside, to cliffside and looks at he goes like <laughs> nice view I can get used to this and then Leona I think that's her name I basically should have been looking at it hold on All right. so basically as Leon says hey <laughs> enjoying the view he goes yeah so can you show me around and he's like huh want to get into this right away huh? he's like yep pretty much come on 
And I, all right, all right, don't be pushy. It's like, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to. She goes, that's fine. Kind of weird that you just wanted to join us so quickly. He goes, look, I know it may be weird. But hey, I can already see that you guys, I mean, you would have took me no matter what, so. <sighs> I wasn't going to fight you. She goes, good. So basically, she shows her around, introduces to the different, well, characters. Say, like, mine. Sh um, hold on. No. Shell, Lubat. Wait, no. Yeah, Lubak. Um, Akami and Bullet. You know, basically, he met each one of them, said hi to them and such. Mine didn't trust him right away. Basically, it was like this in the direction. It was like, I don't know who you are and where you come from, but you join us so quickly isn't normal. So, <laughs> you know, she just walks away. Like, is she always like that? Annoying? She was, e no, yes. It's like, uh, great. Anyways, then, so basically, we go to when, well, Basically, he meets Akami. So, well, and basically, he, they meet Akami, says, and this is Akami. He, basically, Zuku's just seen the big giant fish, he, well, well, bird, actually. He was like, whoa, that's a big bird. Um, <laughs> you sure she could eat all that by herself? And she goes, yep. He's like, you sure? He goes, well, she will share some for you, you know. You're part of the team, which you agree to so quickly, so... Yeah, also, how did you get that outfit on you without well, changing? He's like, oh, um... <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know. Basically, Cerberus says, like... Cerberus basically says, hmm, We better buy some clothing so she can change that. That outfit you wore maybe just a one-time thing in this world. He's like, yeah, I know. He's saying it in his head, basically. He says, I know. I'm going to have to, well, figure out assassin costume. It's going to be annoying. He's like, I know. But deal with it is Zuku. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, are we partners? Well, I mean, we're going to be together from now on. He's like, yes, we are partners. As long as you survive, I survive. Survive. He's like, great. So you're like a parasite, but you don't feed off of me. He's like, uh, I am not a parasite. And you're like, <laughs> sorry. He's like, oh, whatever. So basically, it's generally you know Leona, I me mean, Leon. He's basically like, uh, kid. Hey. He's like, uh, sorry. Think about something. He's like, really? Yeah, home. He's like, oh. Well, anyways, Akami, this is Izuku. Izuku, Akami. And then she goes, hello, Leon, here. And then she throws her a piece of meat, you know, meat. And she was like, I'm very surprised you joined Night Ridge so quickly. Without even a second thought. Well, I mean, you did have a second thought, but you joined us. So, here. And this way, he, you know, she throws me, and then he just grabs it. And he just, you know, starts eating, and, you know, he goes, hmm, pretty good. So, as then, Leo you know, asks, so, when is the next mission gonna, you know, gonna come? And she goes, not until the boss gets back. And he meet the new member. So, basically, she goes around to where her seat is, and then she goes like, the boss! And, well, she goes, hello there, Leon. So, I have a couple, you know, questions to ask of you. Why did you turn in a mission three days late? And she's like, uh. <laughs> and then she runs away, the whole entire, you know, arm gets launched and drags her. And then basically, now then, tell me about this new recruit. And, well, you know, I want to hear more about him then. And then basically she gets up, puts on her jacket, tells Akami to gather them up, and tell me the mission report. And so, well, she does. By the way, if you guys are wondering about Tatsumi, he went back to his village and told them what happened. Well, he's on the way back, and he's going to tell them what happened. So, basically, after 
them telling the report. She goes, hmm, all right then. Okay, Zuka Midoriya. Tell us, why did you join Night Raid so quickly? He was like, simple. I hate corruption. It's so... <laughs> so messy on how everything goes. People getting hurt by it. The weak are always going to be the weak, and the strong will always be strong. Unless you cut them down, or drop them on their heads a few times so that they can understand. They are not special. They are just humans. And they are just scums that deserve death. Which, some people are thinking, whoa. <laughs> I mean, no, we're assassins, but that's kind of, well, dark-ish. But in the right place. As in, well, the leader says, alright, I can see. By the way, um, you guys will know who it is. But anyways, she goes like, anyway, Suzuku, I think I should tell you my name. Basically. Hold on. Okay, so basically I didn't my name, because I knew I was going to mess it up. But basically, na, you know, basically it's N-A-J-E-N-D. So, na, Jenda, basically there's an A at the end. So Najna, Najeda, I'm not too sure. It... <laughs> I'm trying my best on that one. Um, we had to go back and rewatch when they talk, what tell her, well, say her name and stuff. But you know, because they always call her a boss and such. So basically, it was like, and so basically, she tells them about why they're doing this, helping the Revolution Army and such. Take it down one person at a time. And, well, they were like, she would like to see what he's capable of. But, for right now, he has to be trained. In the ways of an assassin, even though you took out someone so quickly, she says, with no hesitation, that could have just been a one-time thing because you're angry. And Zuka just looks at her, and he just says, hmm, I didn't feel nothing when I killed her. So, what does that mean? Which, <laughs> I mean, Lubak, I mean, Lubak, like, come on, man. Killing a kid? How can you? I think he just looks at him and he's like, she was no kid. She was just someone that was corrupted by the society of this war up here, by the capital. And she was turned into a monster. So, I don't really feel much. But inside his head, he's like, damn, I really can't feel anything when I killed her. But it was every though. I feel like I should just die then. Which Cerberus, you know, does tell him. She was not, well, a human no more. Your man, you left her. She became a monster, a demon in human flesh. Yes, basically, there's a lot of effed up people. If you did not know this anime, there's a lot of effed up people. <laughs> and I mean it. Like, the... Well, I don't want to spoil it. The, but the Majesty, basically, the Prime Minister, but it's like, you know, Majesty. Um, I'm really effing up his name, but... The Minister, basically? Yes, the Minister. The Minister. The Minister legit falsified evidence or something just so he can get with the girl with this man's wife yeah yeah and basically one dude legit falsified like falsified to save someone else's butt that was working for him and legit had the guy executed So, I don't think, I don't think I need to say much. So yeah, anyways, continuing on. <laughs> um, so basically, he just looks back at her, and he goes like, so, if you guys want to train me, then well, let's start. And she goes, alright then, Akami. Well, teach him what you know. And she goes, she just nods. And so... Basically, after, well, everything that happened, after basically they just start, 
walking with his, with a basket on. She goes, I'm going to teach you how to catch these certain fish. I don't remember their names. And, well, he's like, okay. What's so special about them? He goes, they're rare here. So, we're going to have them tonight. He's like, gotcha. Well, actually, no way. First, it was the kitchen duty, but then it's this. So, everyone left on a mission. So, anyways. Yeah, so, when he gets to the place, Akami does... Well, sorry to undress, but she's in a bathing suit. So, Izuku was just looking away, not even flushed because of, well... His many interactions with girls has kind of made him kind of, you know, immune to this sort of, so he's not really blushing at her or anything, but he's just looking away. And so she basically, well, I mean, no one has asked him about the scars because they don't know what's happened. They don't want to be, you know, because it may be personal. So basically when... She goes down there, she basically gets, you know, the three fish, she tells him to suppress his aura, and then, well, basically then strike. And he goes, gotcha. So he takes, the, you know, off his jacket, I mean, not his jacket, the, the bag, so the, the uh, not bag, but um, whatever he holds on fishing, you could say bag, or straw, basket, yeah, his basket, and then basically he takes off his, well, oh, Shirt, vest, pants, basically shoes, and the comic can see the scars on him. She is shot by this, and then he gets into the water. And well, a few seconds pass, a few minutes pass, as a Kami is like thinking, can he not get them? As as all of a sudden, Izuku has six of those fish that you know a Kami got flying out of the water. She's shot by that. You know, basically. And so when he swings back up, he goes, how was that? She goes, that was perfect. All done. How are you? He goes, it was just simple. And he's thinking, huh. Is this because of my emotionless? I'm able to suppress my, well, suppress my aura so easily then. Hmm. This, this could come in handy. This is also how Azawa could sneak up on people. So after that and everything, basically they get a little bit more, and then they say they come back to Night Raid. I was then Leona and the boss, actually, Nod. Nod. John? Nagenda? 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 I think it's just Nagenda. 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 So, eh, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce her name. That was one name I knew I was gonna have difficulties with this. What if? But anyways, and she goes, huh? So we don't do this so easily, as Akami nods, and so he goes, hm. yeah, it's simple. Sorry if it was surprising. Which then she asks, and then basically Akami just asks him, Izuku, how did you get those scars, and the scar on your face? And he just smiles. Oh, well, not smiles, actually. He just he was eaten, but then he stops. He goes, I've been in many fights. And most of these scars are from training. It's hard to, well, understand. And you probably would never believe me if I told you where I come from is well, different from here. But just know. I was weak, and my training became, well, rough on me. I usually broke my bones a lot. <laughs> so, well, the scars are mostly from it, and from battles I've been in. But anyways, that's all I can, well, that's all I think I can say. Shows, alright. And then we'll be like, <laughs> How many battles have you been in? Well, I've been in the medical as you think he was the med how can I say this? If you okay, imagine he just says med bay, not med bay, but medical ward. Basically the hospital or basically wherever they take them to get like treated by a doctor. As he just says, I've been basically there at like at such or such hospital wherever. A lot of the times, and <laughs> uh, 
it was a uh, to the point where I actually had a bed just special for me, which everyone was just shocked by that. And he was, <laughs> yeah, he always got an earful about it. But I can tell she, the per the person that was looking after me cared. So, <laughs> as basically, Nakami and Leona and basically the boss nod. As then she goes, now, Leona, tell us about the job that we requested. As basically she basically tells about the wife, telling about the general, hold on, general ogre and what he has done to her fiancé. They've put on death penalty. And even about the oil seller, basically, and how basically he delivered his, the money personally to him and such. And that he's always guarded by these soldiers, and he's not on his personal days off at this district. So, yeah, basically then she tells about she must have, well, to get money she had to do very not good things. And basically get the money very quickly, and a lot of it. So, sell so basically so, something. Yeah, I'm not going to say much. Uh, like I said, effed up. But I'm... Basically, sell herself. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she did. So anyways. And Azuka was like... He just looking at her and he was like, You gotta be fucking kidding me. She did that to get this money? And she nods. I mean, she... She says she might have. She doesn't really know how. But he was like, yeah, Probably... So, this guy has been putting people on false charges, ruining other people's lives, just for the fucking kicks of it, because he thinks it's fun. And, well, she does nod. And basically, service goes like, wait, Ogre? This can't be possible. He was, oh, what happened to him? And he was like, wait, service, you know, he was like, not me personally, but my old partner did. I old wielder before I left him. He, uh, him and Ogre were good friends. And whatever well, we changed him, I heard that I found some, or at least heard some people said that my partner, my old partner, died a long time ago in a fight. This is very unsettling. So, Izuka says, I know. Well, I think I know. I don't know how much you knew him, but this is a job. Yes, I understand. So, anyway, so Izuka says, How about we take this on? In which everyone just looks at him and like, What? He's like, Look. I know we're very few people, but two people can go after this guy. As he pointed to the oil merchant, then someone can go after him. So only me, Kami, and Leon, like Leona, right, Leona, yeah, Leon, and which, and you say, well, you're just a rookie. He's like, look, I may be just a rookie, but I'm strong. You already know that. Basically, don't worry about me. Besides, I need some new clothes, anyways. So, let's go. Basically, she goes, the boss says, I didn't set the mission. He's like, so you have to accept it? We already took the money. I say that we already did accept it. And he just leaves the room, which, well, she goes, Leo says, he has a point. He's like, well, then Night Raider already set the mission. Go. So, basically... They leave, they get to the capital. We run, showed him the map on where it is and what's going to be not, you know, populated. And he nods and such. So they do buy him some new clothing. Basically, Izuku's wearing a long jacket that's black. Along with, well, keeping the vest on and the white shirt. Well, tell the white shirt he changed for black. Well, not black. Mm, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, actually, just black, black vest. 
Um, keeping the pants black and the shoes the same. Reasons why, eh, why not? So, basically Leona says, are you sure about this? He was perfectly fine with this, Leona. I mean, we own. He's like, you sure? I mean, Kami did say some stuff to you on the way here. And he remembers when Akami says, if you can't kill him, then you're not good at Night Raid. And he's looking at her, he's like, I can kill him, fine. She goes, we'll see about that. So it's basically the same thing to ta like he like she did to Tatsumi. In which, well, she says about her past about Akami's, the exact same thing. And he goes, Get it. Don't worry, I can sense she really cared. Besides, <laughs> I kind of like the group here. It's very interesting. As when he said that, he said it with a smile on his face. As Leona, like Leon didn't, I think it's Lee, yeah, Leon, I really think that. You guys can say if it's, if I'm wrong or not, but she's generally shot that he could actually smile. Most of the time, he just had like a plain face and non caring. But she goes, So you can smile. He's like, yeah, I can. <laughs> Come on, let's just get this mission done. I'll look after him. Just, all right. So basically, after that, you know, they separated, and he waits till nighttime, and well, ogre's there. Sa the oil merchant died, basically, same way as in canon. Basically, Zuko goes like, "Excuse me, sir. You must be General Ogre. I have a question to ask you." He's like. What is it? It's my day off. He's like, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to. It's just, I want to ask you a question real quick. But it's a personal one that has to be in a, well, in an area that's not so populated. I do apologize if that seems inconvenient for you. In which, well, they, he does says, not at all. Please, show me the way. He's like, right away, sir. So Izuku's leaving with him. Meanwhile, Akami and Leona. Basically, Akami's, you know, running towards where Izuku's location should be. As Leona's like, Leon, you're basically like, Akami, why are you running towards that way? We should get back to the base. Because I don't trust him. He's like, huh? He joined us too quickly. He was eager to, it seemed like. I don't know why. I just have a bad feeling about him. But she goes, how can you? He killed... Well... She goes, I know, it could have been a setup. He could be working for the capital and the minister. Basically, she goes, come on. You can't judge him right away just because of that. What happens if he is on our side? You'll think we're betraying him. Kami goes like, I don't, I know, but still. I don't want no one to die in Night Raid. And besides, if he does betray us, I'll just kill him. In which they arrive just when Azuku and Ogre get there. As Ogre's like, all right, what does he want to ask me? Basically, Azuku takes off the hood. As all of a sudden, his eye, well, his hair is, well, red, and his eyes are red too. Which Akami and Leon is shot. Basically, before you know he even get there and wait for him, he says, he asked, hey, um. Cerberus, can I change my look anyway? He goes, yes, your eye color and hair. Even your facial features, if you want. He's like, just my hair color. Is there, yes, basically. You're wondering when I use, well, not me. When you use my power or my, say, my imperial arms, your hair will change color. Same thing with Leviathan and Diablo, I mean, and Dragon. If you want to be... Just saying their beast names. He's like, all right, thanks. So basically, Izuku's like, so I have a question to ask you. Did you really, you know, falsify information for someone? He's like, huh? Why are you asking that? He was like, because I'm part of a, well, a police force here that's. Just new and I want to make sure. So, is that really it? He was like, yeah. <laughs> so what, you're going to try to arrest me? He's like, oh no, no, no. 
I'm gonna kill you. As all of a sudden, the demeanor and tone of his voice change. As General Ogre says, "Fat shit, you try." As when he basically, you know, you know, slice his sword down, Izuku just catches it barehanded, and he goes, "Is that the best you got?" As basically, he moves his sword to his side. As he just and throws a right punch into Ogre's face and sends him for a little bit flying. He goes. And they see he just activates the eyes of Cerberus, which then shows him everything he's done. And even Cerberus is, well, disgusted by him. He was like, you bastard. So you have all those people killed just because of money? <laughs> you really are a corrupted scumbag. As Ogre gets up, he was like, what do you know about me? I am the strong and they are the weak. They deserve to be underneath my boot and die! As basically, Izuku was like, If you are the weak. And then he just, like, basically, he's next to the, well, his sword. And then he just kicks it up and he just catches it. He's like, Then I am the strong. Wait, if you are the strong, then. Yeah, okay, you are the strong, then. You know, when I say he catches it, then what am I? As he just disappears right, you know, from everyone's sight. As they're just shot. Well, Ogre shot, as then all of a sudden, Izuku's right behind him. As well. He's like, Ha! There you! Uh, my arms! And Izuku's just looking at him, he's like, That's not all. And he sees the blood on his own sword, Ogre's basically seeing his blood on, well, blood on the sword. And then he realizes, You bastard! And <laughs> head, body, it, it, it's cut. Like, his head was cut off, his body was cut into piece, like, into X shape. And it actually went all the way through. So, it's just like, he just falls in peace. As they're just shocked by how easily he was able to do it, he just throws it to the side. He goes like, Tch. A miserable dog should die. And as he's just walking away, puts on the hood, as basically his hair goes back to green, and his eyes go back to green. As a comic was like, he he did it. He was, and basically, you know, Leon says, See, I told you he was a part of us. You should have believed me. She goes, I, I'm sorry. It's just, I know. But you saw how he acted. How did he... How did he know? He was like, do you think he has imperial arms? No. He would have had it on him. Right? Maybe. I'll have to ask him when we get back to the base. And so, that's where I'm going to leave it off, everyone. Hope you guys like this what if. Have a nice day, night, wherever you are, and bye.